Alright guys, this is going to be my first voiceover video, uh, so I'm really excited and I'm going to talk about my process for drawing this divination wizard. So here we go! Okay, so the first part of this video, um, it was actually recorded using Eggie.io. Uh, as this first sketch was done with the Artist Arcana group that I'm a part of, um, which I will put a link to the latest to this video as well as the latest video that we did, um, where we uh, gave each other D and D character prompts that were given to us by uh, by some fans. And I received the character prompt of a human divination wizard who loves to gamble, uh, is blind, and uses tarot cards as magic missiles. Um, I was super excited to get this one, this uh, prompt. I really, really liked the concept idea, and I actually surprisingly busted this um, sketch out and concept out pretty quickly. Um, I was really happy with uh, this so far because I really liked um, the pose, the idea of like the tossing the cards kind of in the air, um, controlling them with magic. And um, at this point, I had found myself um, doing a lot of sketches with pink, so I kind of kept up with that. Uh, so this is me opening up the sketch in Procreate, um, as this is where I moved on to working on the final piece. And here I'm distorting the image because I thought that the initial sketch maybe looked a little too um, static and not dynamic enough. And so I tried to distort it um, to look more dynamic and stuff, uh, but you'll s and but you'll see quickly that I kind of. Uh, I kind of realized that I made a mistake in doing so and that it kind of just looks overly warped and um, too thin and stuff. And so in a little bit I'll revert back to the original sketch. Um, but I'm still doing all of my lines with pink. Uh, with pink, that same pink, because I I just really liked kind of like the, the energy um, that it brought into this character, and so I stuck with that. Um, yeah, so that's me changing back. And so right now what I'm doing is, uh, because my first initial sketch in Aggie was so um, kind of rushed because I only did the I only did that part in Aggie for like 20 minutes, um, this is me trying to almost do like a more refined sketch where I'm trying to just find um, those lines that kind of got lost in the the overall sketchiness of the initial concept. Um, so really just trying to define lines for the cloak here, um, and then lines for like the scarf, the hair, the, the shirt sleeves, and things like that. Just trying to really define that more. And... Uh, Sometimes this takes a little while for me um, because I do a lot of iterative design where uh, a lot of my stuff is very loose and very quick and just kind of scratching almost my lines into the into the page um, and then just kind of refining uh, like lowering the opacity of that layer creating a new layer on top and then building off of that layer so a lot of my drawings end up being very iterative um, where I kind of just refine as I go as opposed to trying to refine uh, the sketch on a single layer um, and I kind of prefer working this way just because it means that I'm constantly moving uh, I'm not spending too much time on lines second-guessing myself um, and here I'm trying to Again, I'm trying to go for like a more dynamic pose by, by thinking about turn, tilting it, but I decided not to again um, <laughs> because it just didn't look great. However, unfortunately, it's not an idea I give up on. Uh, so really just continuing to look for um, lines, trying to correct some anatomy as I go. Um, 
Also trying to make the cards look a little bit more dynamic. Uh, but that is ultimately not the formation that I end up with for the cards. And then this is me just trying to kind of block in some, some more, some general color um, for the palette. Just trying to figure out really um, what kind of palette I want to stick with because the initial one is very pale uh, and kind of washed out. And I actually really liked this uh, whole palette of colors. Um, it's definitely a little bit different from what I typically do, which uh, for anyone that, that knows me knows that my favorite color is blue and I feel like that kind of um, comes across in too much of my work. So I've really been trying to grow my color palette and I, I think I really, I was really satisfied with this result of this um, pink and teal and purple combination. Um, and so, yep, there we go. So I tilt it and I decided to keep it, um, for now, uh, to keep that d dynamic idea. Uh, and then this is me trying to kind of block in shadows and trying to see what color the shadows are going to be. Um, and this is, uh, I also keep this also kind of style for the color is also kind of fast and loose at this stage because this is really just me trying to put down ideas of what I want to do um, so that way that I'm not I have something down and I'm not trying to second guess myself um, so much because I know I will spend forever second guessing myself if I kind of let myself do that uh, so I decided to change the background to a teal color and then I'm trying to kind of uh, show that there's like magic emanating from the cards um, using different light effects and great gradients um, and different layer blending modes. And then me trying to draw the shadow underneath the whole figure. Um, and this is right when I finally start doing the final ink. Uh, for this one, for this ink, uh, I use the uh, Able Essentials uh, Able Ink brush. Um, I have tweaked it a little bit more to kind of suit my style, uh, but this is, as of right now, my go-to brush for inking. Um, I really enjoy this brush. It's very nice. It really kind of feels like a, like a pen, or not a pen, like a, like a, you're inking with a brush, which I, I really, really like. Um, it's got some fantastic line variation and uh, it still has a little bit of that texture of ink showing through, which I also really appreciate. Um, and you can see here, I try to kind of uh, make sure that some of the line thicknesses um, are either more uniform or they're more varied in some areas and uh, just going over with the ink um, to really solidify and commit to lines. Uh, I rotate my canvas a lot in Procreate, um, which is probably a super bad habit to have. Uh, and there are times when I, I try to kind of stay away from that, but in, in this one, I, I haven't really. Um, so there's, you're gonna see a lot of me zooming in and rotating the canvas and I apologize um, if anyone gets motion sick from this. Uh, I'm trying to also be very mindful of, you know, what fabrics do I want to come across as thicker. Um, this is me deciding that the tilted pose just doesn't look good. It almost looks like she's slipping on banana peel and so I re revert it back to what it originally was. And then um, I am actually saving a lot of the colors that I used uh, as a palette so that way then I don't have to keep trying to uh, uh, eyedropper them later. Um, so this part is, uh, is a kind of a reference or an homage to Karina from Drawfee. Uh, she does a lot of dirty icing coloring as she calls it. And I've kind of adopted that style of just kind of 
willy-nilly coloring out without caring about like being inside the lines or anything um because to me it's definitely a more freeing and it feels more natural to kind of paint outside of the lines um so i i'm laying down base color and then going on top with the shadow and it's it's very much all over the place um and i'm not i'm really not sticking too much into uh trying to keep things inside the lines because what i end up doing is masking it out later uh which is actually a very satisfying part of my process that i've come to enjoy um so yeah just again general blocking in and then taking the uh the shadows and then blending the shadows into the original shade um for my coloring i use pretty much exclusively the max pack gouache brushes at least for for this style of coloring um super recommend them they're absolutely fantastic i'll also put a link to those in the description as well and here i'm also adding highlights so uh creating a new layer and uh setting it to uh screen or add depending on the situation and then also just kind of blending that into the uh base color uh and again not super caring too much about kind of like where it goes because uh, it's all going to be masked out later. Um, the what I the color that I'm using for my shadows is uh, I usually go to like around the same color purple for my shadows, um, and uh, the color that I'm actually using for the highlights is actually the complement of that color, uh, which is this this green that you see in the top right corner. Um, so that's the color that I'm using for the highlights, and I find that it just gives um, a lot more contrast and uh, depth to my pieces when I make sure when I have my uh, my shadow and my highlights be complementary colors. And I'm just continuing to uh i realized that i forgot that the bandana is the same color as the cape and so i'm fixing that adding that in there and then doing i decided to keep the uh little breastplate and the pants the same color as well um to like almost like a burgundy color because uh, I, I, I want to use, I've, I've realized that I um, need to get more into the habit of using like as few colors as possible instead of trying to like throw every single color under the sun at my characters uh, so I've really been trying to work hard on that and so that's why I decided to just keep those two pieces the same color uh, And then I also really, really ended up liking this um, almost cornflower blue lilac, uh, this blue color. Um, I ended up really, really liking that. And I think I'm gonna use that in, a, in the future for some other things too. Um, but I, I don't know if I could see myself using it as like the main color for something. I think I really like it as an accent color. Just doing highlights on the uh, waist wrap. And then I decided to keep the boots, the hair, and the gloves the same color as well. Uh, I also realized at this point that the hands looked really wonky. They looked way too large, way too fat um, and big. And so I squashed them. And I think that made it a lot better in my opinion, because there was just something so off about them. And I'm pretty sure it's because they were ungodly huge. I'm trying to 
remember how to do hair. <laughs> um, blending it out. Uh, I use one of the Max Packs uh, gouache brushes that is specifically for smudging. I use the natural one uh, because that's the it has the texture that I like the best for my work. And then here, I, I tried smudging the highlights for the hair, um, but I just didn't like the effect, and so I just set it to a Gaussian blur. But I, I do, I think that's the only time I really, um, it's one of the few times I use the Gaussian blur um, instead of just blending it out. And then decide to add some color to her lips. That pink was definitely, this pink is definitely a little, a little too bright. And so just trying to also move around the mouth because some of it ends up looking a little weird. Yep. And so I went with a more natural lip color. Uh, at this point I'm merging, um, layers together and now i'm masking off uh each section so that way then it comes together um as one whole uh very nice and clean thing uh and this is probably one of the most satisfying parts of this process to me is uh masking out the clean edges uh so that way then I don't have all of the, the nasty, you know, painting over the lines uh, kind of thing going on. Uh, for this part, I've been using the uh, Abel fill brush uh, and then just color dropping in white in the middle so i outline it with the fill brush and then color drop white in the middle um so which is much quicker than just trying to like manually paint in the mask and to me it's almost it's also it's almost like magic uh to kind of outline it and then drop it in and then see that part just kind of turn into the the colors Uh, I have a habit of duplicating my files before I do anything new to them, uh, just knowing that I have backups on backups on backups. And so this is me trying to work on the tarot cards. Um, I decided to actually do them in blue because I, I really like that blue uh, accent color so much. Um, and I tried to kind of uh, perspective change them the way they were floating in the air, and then I realized I should actually do the card back before doing that. Uh, so this is me designing the back of the tarot card. I didn't want to spend too much time on this section um, because the cards were small and um, I I didn't want to put so much time and detail into uh, this piece um, or at least for the, the cards because that seemed kind of uh, that seemed like that would almost detract from the idea of the character itself. Uh, and so this is me trying to replicate uh, the look of gold foil on a card. So I'm layering, multiply, and screen layers. And then uh, trying to mess around with settings to figure out what's going to get me the best gold foil look. And so I, I found it there. And then I'm also trying to figure out what pattern, what texture brush I should use for the card background. And I end up liking the Fleur de Lis, so I go with that. And then I copy every single card and put that in place. And then I end up using the distort tool um, to make them look properly uh, to look properly uh, 
in like perspective as they're kind of being manipulated and, and almost thrown into the air. Uh, and then I thought it would be cool too if she's like holding them between fingers in her hand. So that's me masking it out. And then I decided, oh, it would also be cool if she had um, another card in her other hand. So almost like she's uh, like throwing the deck and tossing it into the air and then catching it with the other hand. And then I decided to put a glow around the cards to make it more obvious that they're magical. And I really, really like the way that effect came out as opposed to the whole like uh, line of light. Uh, and then there's the shadow to kind of ground her a little bit. And then the rest of this is me just trying to figure out what to put in the background. Um, and I really like the bokeh light effect. So that's what I ultimately ended up with. And uh, this is the finished piece. And I actually am super, super happy about this. Uh, overall, from the time that I uh, took in Aggie IO to the very end result, this took about five and a half hours. Uh, so that's five and a half hours of footage condensed down into a little over 20 minutes. And I actually super, super, super enjoyed this piece. Um, I definitely, definitely, definitely want to do more D&D uh, &D character art um, or just any kind of tabletop role-playing game art in general because I think it's a lot of fun and it's something I love. So I definitely want to do more of that. Uh, if you have any suggestions as to what you'd like me to draw next, please let me know. Also, please let me know what you thought of this video because this is again my first voiceover video and I um, I really want to know what you guys think about this because I've never done this before and I think I want to do uh, more of these so if there's anything you want to hear me talk about when it comes to my process please let me know um, oh, I did also uh, start a Patreon, so uh, I will leave the link uh, to that in the description. And if you'd like to come and support me, that would be super, super awesome. I do lots of sticker rewards, and um, there's also the potential to get some nice digital wallpapers, as well as the... Uh, actual files of my artwork so you can go in and see what I did with each of the uh, with each of the pieces that I've done um, and there's even some commission tiers where you can get commissions from me every month so uh, with that being said thank you guys so so much for watching I super super appreciate it and I hope to see you soon in the next video bye guys <laughs>